I'm going to be the first therapist to tell you exactly what to do. Bryson, are you kidding me that the same card with the small consulting group font is playing? Even though we've advanced our new logo? Rob, I, I, I updated it literally everywhere else and I apologize. This is like the opening of the show. And it was like, it was such a moment last week. It's the same card. Guys, do you see like what I'm dealing with? And I don't want to bring the energy down as soon as we start. But I was so excited to see the new card because you see now how Hex, and shout out to Hex who does all the promo videos. He just sent me an 18 long, 18 minute long video of all of my bits from the promo. We will be posting this onto YouTube. A best of R.I.P. Dyke Feist. Now that we are doing the Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. Okay, Bryson, we, I've, we've been over this. We're not prioritizing the words Robbie Hoffman over Consulting Group. They're all one. I am the group. The group is me. We've been clear. But do you, do you see that hex? They put me finally at the beginning of the of the of this last week on Planet Scum. They're always burying me somewhere in between. But now I opened it. And this might not mean anything to any of the other creators on this godforsaken channel. But I notice things like this. I know what you're about. Everybody is flexing where they can at all times. Know this for your life. Okay, nothing is accidental. Everything is intentional. So when they bury me, in the middle of last week on Planet Scum. Okay, that's a judgment. That's a judgment. You read it as you will. But now they opened it with last week Planet Scum, Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group, because the show has fucking taken off. Whether Bryson holds us back with his inability to update these cards or not. Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group has got its own rhythm, its own momentum. We are off. The ship has left the station. It is what it is. Welcome to Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. This is your one-stop shop. We do it all here. Fashion, as you can tell. For my outfit tonight, some of you are noticing. You don't think I own two necklaces? I do. Natalie made me one, and I purchased a silver one. Okay, I'm wearing both my necklaces in one stop. Fashion, look it up. We give finance advice. We give romance advice. Stocks. Hit me up. This week, new show name, new colors. I know that you all have gone to your neighbor, your aunt, your cousin, and you're getting them to call in. I trust. I trust my, my loyal audience and fan base that you have done this. I trust when I check in the private chat with Bryson who's in the queue, he's going to say the queue is all booked up. No open spots. No need to push calls. Because I trust you guys are getting your mothers to call in. You're getting new friends to call in. You don't think I had another semi-viral tweet this week? Okay. Bring up my Twitter handle, Bryson. You're following me at I am Robbie Hoffman on Twitter. I had what... Uh, 1,200 likes on a post this week. That's not nothing. And of course, Catherine tried to make it about him. And it was about me. It wasn't about him. It was that I had the best packet out of 800 packets. Not that he read all the packets, but that's what he read in that post. He read that. He's so great. He read the packets, even though he requested the packets. We're following me on I am Robbie Hoffman on Twitter, on Instagram, at Robbie Hoffman, and now on YouTube. If you guys don't smash the like on YouTube and subscribe to me, I will not be uploading these episodes to YouTube. And the three people who watch me in Australia are going to be very upset. So why don't you answer to them instead of them calling my DMs? Flooding me with why is it not on YouTube? They can't watch it when it's live Thursday nights because they're in Australia. There's no Thursdays in Australia, apparently. I don't know how it works over there. But they have six days and they don't have Thursday. So they count on the YouTube. But at the YouTube does not perform. I will not put the energy into it. Help me help you. Smash the like on every single video. Keep it playing. Even if you've already watched this live, it helps the channel out. 
As usual, you can find all of my links in one place, planetscum.live slash Robbie Hoffman. Bryson has taken time to update my website, which we all just discovered I had last week. But apparently, at least the website's up. Who cares that the opening of the show, who cares that the opening of the show hasn't been updated? That he did it on Microsoft Paint in 1994, and this is what we're opening with. Guys, get in the queue, 802-427-7286. Somebody DM me again today saying, I am not of lesbian persuasion. May I call into the show again? This show is homophobic. We prefer non-lesbians. I've been clear about this. It is open to everyone. Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group is not exclusive. We are now helping those most in need, predominantly non-lesbians. If you are not a lesbian, believe me, you need my help. Everybody, and I mean this, everybody, old, young, straight, gay, anything in between is welcome to call the show and in fact is encouraged to call this show. This is the best bang for your buck anywhere in time. You don't think my therapist is $200 an hour? And by the way, by the way, it's not an easy feat being my therapist, so I give her full credit. But this is pay what you can therapy and you get what you pay for. You're contributing. You're not just watching, calling, getting people to call. You're contributing to this show. This is not a free show. You're contributing at planetscum.live. Drop down Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. Make sure you're contributing specifically to this show. You give five bucks, you're going to get five bucks worth of therapy. You give 10, it just went up. It just went up. You give 30, I find you a girlfriend. How does that sound? Pretty good for 30 fucking bucks. People confused about this being a free show. Do I look non-Jewish to you? Is this the voice of a Gentile to you? No. It is not, in fact, it's not a free show. It's not even a pay what you can show. It's a pay the most that you can show. At planetscom.live, even if you're just watching, you're contributing. If you came to the show live, believe me, I'd charge at least 30 bucks a ticket. You're giving 5, 10, 15, whatever you have. It keeps the lights on here. I don't know what it does for Bryson, but we're paying him. And hopefully, you know, you can only help those as much as you can help them, as much as they're willing to be helped. Hopefully by next week, Bryson can figure out the opening card. As usual, I am here for you 24-7. We still have our hotline available for you if you're not able to call in live on Thursdays but need me desperately, 702-706-3953. 24-7 consultation line. I don't know why I can't say that word. Consulting line is open 24-7. We will get your call on the show, 702-706-DYKE. Now, brings me, and you better be, while I'm doing all my housekeeps, Bryce, I'm going to keep you on your toes. I just did housekeeps. You think that card would come up? Housekeeping. It's, it, was, it was the old Housekeeping. branding and you haven't gone to Oh, it was the it. old. Don't put it up. Good, good, <laughs> call. good catch. Good catch. Good catch. He didn't update our housekeeping. But I want to see if he even watches the show back there. We don't know what he's doing. Playing video games or he has all those toys. He has a lot of like transformers. Do you know what I mean? I'm eating a sandwich. That's what I Okay, mean. Bryson, I'm, I'm talking to my audience. Like, this is wild to interrupt silencing women in the first 10 minutes of the show. I have still, alas, not received the Dykevi sweatshirt. Okay. You've gotten yours. You guys who haven't gotten one, you're getting what's left of them at planetscum.live slash merch. They are running out. I think there's only a few sizes left. And I know you're getting them because I haven't gotten mine. The creator of this show hasn't gotten the Dyke by Sutcher to give out. The good news is I still have a winner. The good news is we'll still be announcing the winner tonight at the end of the show. Yeah, just like when your teacher has the marked, the marked papers back, but she only gives them at the end of the class. 
That's what we're doing tonight. You think your teacher's the only one who could do that? Oh, we're announcing the winner tonight of the vintage Dyke Vice hoodie. Tonight, even though we don't have it. Baruch Hashem, we have it by next week. If they lift the ban on sending to Jews and they get me one, the one I ordered and paid for, even though it should have been sent to me for free, you think. And I will be signing it next week on camera and sending it to the winners that we announce tonight at the end of the show. I think it's going to be a shock for a lot of you. Stay tuned to the end of the show. We will be wi uh, revealing the winner of the now vintage Dyke Vice hoodie. Get what's left of them at planetscum.live slash merch. Guys, I know that when I check the queue right now, I'm about to take a call. I know that you guys have flooded the queue with people who've never called. People who are afraid to call. New watchers, if you are a new watcher of the show, welcome to the show. I sound unwelcoming, but I'm actually incredibly welcoming. And you'll know this when you call in. Nobody is more comforting than me somehow. It doesn't make sense. It doesn't make sense. But alas, it is true. Ask everybody else who has called. Bryson, who do we have on the line? New callers only. Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. Hit me. We have Kelly from Ontario on the line. Kelly from Ontario. Hello. Kelly from Ontario. Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. How can I help you? Hi. So I have a situation. Please. I am never able to finish a hobby. So, like, I always start something, like, say, in... The summer I started cross stitching and I did all these presents and I finally got to my dad's and I'm the halfway through and I've stopped it and I haven't touched it since then. And since then I picked up crocheting and I've been able to crochet a Shrek, which is awesome, but I can't get back to how how do I finish a task? <laughs> you have to be passionate about the task. Kelly, you're calling me in a very interesting week in my life. I, um, as many of you know, I posted that I'll be going skiing in a couple of weeks. Oh, I love skiing. Okay. Um, I went skiing in high school um, a couple of times. Didn't go so well for me. But this time, uh, we're all quarantining and getting, uh, it's like a little, like the, the ski place is really good about that. And they have everything going on. And I'm going to have lessons, okay? Now, what I've been doing to try and prepare for skiing, because I remember when I went skiing in high school, what happened was that it was maybe three days we would go. And the first day I went and I had lessons from my friend, who was an avid skier. And then the next day I couldn't ski because my legs were jelly. So what good is that? <laughs> You're supposed to do three days, but my legs are jelly. I literally can't move again. So I, had to, I couldn't even continue to see if I could ski. Now I want to prepare for this ski because I haven't been able to get outside because of COVID. So skiing presented the best opportunity. It came up and it's per it's outside and naturally distanced and the whole bit. And I didn't want to give this up because I feel like it's so important for me to have some type of activity. So to prepare for it and not waste any of the few precious days that I will be doing the skiing thing, I've been trying to run. Okay, I wanted to start, I, mm -hmm. I'm running, I'm doing some type of exercise so that my legs aren't jelly and then I won't be able, you know, to do it. The problem is the running isn't sticking, Kelly. I hate <laughs> the running. When I tell I you I hate the running, running I either. hate starting the run. I hate during the run. I hate after the run. My girl called me and was like, don't you feel like a euphoric, like a, like something after? I said, no. No, I, I feel like vomiting. No, okay. I feel symptoms of COVID. Yep. I don't feel good. And I, and I, and I did what I've done now, probably in the past two weeks, I probably done 10 runs, 10 runs. So it's, it's not going to stick. And I have to know today. I knew today. I decided today, even it's funny that you call me that I'm not running. 
I'll do squats at home. Mm -hmm. I'll do something to prepare, something light. But the running, I'm not going to be a life runner. I don't have the bug. It's not coming to me. It's not going to happen. This mm -hmm. is with you and crocheting and this and that. These aren't your passions. We maybe get a couple passions in our life, okay? Mm -hmm. Comedy, I'm obsessed with. Okay? It's, it's I very don't have interesting to because... Oh, yes. Sorry, it's interesting because I'm studying recreational therapy and what you're saying is very cohesive to what I'm being taught, but it's very hard to apply to yourself. Oh, wow. See, I these are just natural things. It's amazing that they, some people intuitively know these things like me. This is why I offer consulting. Because even though I didn't do the school, exactly. I innately know these things. That's why I'm an excellent consultant. But anyway... You're not passionate about it. You're not going to stick to it if you don't love it. Stand up. I hate how much I love it because no matter what, even if I'm tired, I got to go and do it because that's how much I love it so much. Are you kidding me? If I'm tired, I'm going to run. I'm not running if I'm not tired. Okay. Crochet, unless you love it and it's forcing you to do it, you're not going to stick to it. Okay. So find something. If you want a hobby that's like that, you have to continue to search for something you love. You may not love. This might be, you might have a basket of hobbies that you do crocheting a little bit, then you do, you toggle back to knitting. You toggle back to whatever you're doing, okay? You might have a few different things that you like to try and not do, okay? But uh, but in terms of sticking to it, you're not gonna stick to it because you're not obsessed with it. There are people who have Etsy shops, this is all they do and they love it. Mm -hmm. Okay, <laughs> so, so you just, the advice is you're not going to stick to it unless you love it. So that's that. For me, exercise, I discovered climbing indoors only. I don't have a death wish. I don't want to be off a mountain somewhere. I want to be indoors and controlled. Thank you very much. And since climbing gyms close, and it happens to be great exercise. But I, I, but I love climbing that even if it wasn't great exercise, I would probably do it. It so happens that I get great exercise in. But climbing is closed, and I've had to replace it with something. But none of these things will stick because I don't love them like I love climbing, and I just have to wait for that to come back. So keep searching, okay, and okay. find. Sure. Um, and I don't have advice for how you stick to it because it. My how you stick to it is be passionate about it, and I can't create the passion. Mm -hmm. I love that. That's awesome. Well, Kelly, let three people you know. Know that you called in. I love Robbie that. Hoffman Consulting Vice. <laughs> you contributed whatever money you had at planetscum.live. Drop down, Robbie Hoffman Consulting. And you got great advice. And Robbie didn't bite. Robbie gave you advice, mm -hmm. in fact, you loved. Thank you for calling, <laughs> Kelly. You. I can't wait to see you next week. Thanks for joining us, guys. Guys, turn to whoever you're sitting. I see there's open spots in the queue. Turn to whoever you're sitting with. So help me God. And tell them to call in. Okay, tell them to call in. I know you're sitting with... I know some of you have roommates. What are you, all millionaires? No. So whoever the hell you're sitting with, you're saying, hey, call in to Robbie, even if you've got nothing. She'll tell you what you have and what you don't have. Believe me. You might have people who say, well, what would I even call in with? Robbie Hoffman Consulting Advice. I don't need advice. Just say hello to me and I'll figure it out. We'll get into it. All anonymous, Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group, 802-427-7286. Flood the queue. Bryson, do we have dot here? We do. The dot call. Hello. Dot, at the very least, we have you. I'm here. Oh, you know man. Are? How are you, Robbie? I am well. How are you? Uh, I'm doing good. I was uh, thinking I have a thing uh, for okay. you, which is uh, have you, uh, for uh, cardio. The only cardio I have ever been able to stomach is uh, riding a bike. I bought a bike last summer, and it, I, I have become a bike evangelist about it. I think it's one of the greatest things you can do with your time. I know, and I have a bike. Dot, in Toronto, I lived in Toronto for three and a half years. I biked to and from work every day. I did like 15 kilometers 
there and back every single day. I loved biking, but LA, I'm scared out of my mind to bike. In fact, I, I have my bike in LA. It's all rusted now because I don't use it because it's terrifying to bike here because nobody is aware of bikes here. There are certain paths I guess you can drive to, but it becomes a thing where you have to like somehow bring the bike there. You can't draw, you can't bike to the path. And yeah, I don't that's, the car that's no fun. You want to just like pop out of your apartment yeah. and pop yes. on your bike. That's yes. part of the appeal of biking. Yes. I yeah. don't know. Maybe I'm also very biased because I do live in Chicago, which is a very bike friendly city. It's a bike friendly city that like Toronto and even New York has bike lanes everywhere. It's like here, if you're on a bike, you it's a death wish. There's not lanes and almost anywhere like there's at like parks certain parks and like even then i feel like it's like mountain biking too which is like intense and a whole other thing i want to bike you know i want to bike with my tunes in dot and i yeah. like you want to you want to just kind of feel the wind through your hair and kind of yes. like just cruise along yes my hair like this i mean i'd be wearing a helmet guys i'd be wearing a helmet always you gotta wear a helmet People want a death wish. They're not wearing a helmet. What do you think? You're better than the road? Like, what is, what's the yeah, thing yeah, here? Is, is it that important to you to look hot while you're doing exercises? Get a, get a cute helmet. They exist. Yeah, like, think about how much hotter you'd look not dead. How much True. hotter you would be not with a smashed head. Guys, you're calling in. Dot and I are waiting for your call. Okay. We got to Oh, we got people are in the queue. Look, see here. Some of you are growing. Here they are. Okay, Dot and I. Dot, are you ready for this call? I'm I am ready for this call. Let's take it. Dot gave me advice on Dot's call. Okay, the consulting group yeah. is expanding and we have all kinds of people willing to help. Sometimes the consultant herself needs help. Sometimes Robbie needs a little pick me up. Who who's helping me? But Dot. Certainly not Bryson. Wow, we got a lot in the queue. Bryson. You guys are you guys are making me feel good. Think about how good I make you feel. To give a little bit back to me wouldn't kill. Not only are you flooding the queue, I want you guys to contribute planetscum.live. Drop down Robbie Hoffman Consulting. Okay, this show must make the most money of all the other shows. Okay, it's very important to me to show this channel how it's done. Stop if you're wondering you. also, like, I make count my contributions every week. We all do it. You gotta, man. You the, gotta this, do this it. It's just fun. And, like, people work really hard on it. And you know that they're working against me. Unless when it's I'm the most profitable show. Unless the show makes the most on the network, they're always trying to change my time slot and do this day and do that day. The show consistently has to make the most. Or they come up with excuses not to send me a sweatshirt. Okay, not to pay me on time. Not to put me in the last week on Planet Scum up top. There's so many ways in which they let me know. Please help continue to keep this show number fucking one. Planet Scum dot live. Contribute. Drop down Robbie Hoffman Consulting. Who do we have on the line for the dot call? We have Abby from Mississippi. Hello? Abby from Mississippi. Oh. Dot and Robbie on the line. How can we help you here at the group? Um, well, hey, Susie told me to call in. Thank you. <laughs> um, and uh, I have just been having kind of a rough day. Yeah. Um, I am in a clinical mental health grad program. So I'm studying to become a therapist. Yeah. And um, we've had like these little role play sessions with our classmates. This is the first like quote unquote client that I've had is just a classmate. Very and we've been recording on. these sessions and mm -hmm. submitting them to our instructor. Mm -hmm. And so I was under the impression that it was just between the three of us. 
-hmm. But all of a sudden he emails us today and it's like, by the way, y'all need to pick 15 minutes um, for, to present to class. And the last session I had done was just really emotional. I was just really upset and just going through a lot of weird stuff yeah. and just like relationship things. And I just felt like really vulnerable and like I didn't want to share it with the class, but I also felt very pressured to share. Mm -hmm. And after I did, I just felt, I just feel awful. I just feel not good. <laughs> and I don't know like what to do. Um, now, was this on Zoom? Okay, and can you do you have the kind of uh, schooling where you can talk to the professor? There's like office hours and stuff. Yeah. Okay, I would first of all never do that to yourself again. If you do, really don't want to do something, yeah. and you know that you're not feeling that you, you had it, you listen to yourself first and foremost. Okay, um, first and foremost, nobody's looking out for you but you. You love yourself more than anybody else can. You protect yourself better than anybody else can, okay? And when it's that much, when you knew that you didn't want to share, I would have privately messaged the, the teacher and explained, hey, I'm actually, it was an intense session for me. I'm actually going to opt out of sharing um, today. Happy to talk about this when I'm feeling a little bit better, say tomorrow or in the coming days, okay? You're A, never doing this again. You learned this lesson today and it's over, okay? Nope. <laughs> so, because you did it and you feel you feel terrible about it. The solace you can take is that you learned this lesson. You won't be doing it again. Okay. I don't know how effective it is to tell the teacher in hindsight that you felt pressured and didn't want to just because it was the exercise and maybe you had misunderstood it. And I don't think the teacher was going out of their way, it sounds like, to implement anything on you that wasn't asked of anybody else in the class. Um, that said, mm -hmm. if you feel strongly, you'd like to communicate with the professor, how this made you feel, it might help the professor see that sometimes they can take the, the, the you know, uh, they can take some of the pressure off the pedal, um, in terms of suggesting these types of things after such intense exercises are demanded of the students, you know, that actually you might be something mm -hmm. the professor can learn from that. Sometimes when it's, it, these things can lead to intense experiences and maybe, um, the sharing should be a little more optional especially given the nature of the of the study that you guys are doing. Yeah, and like, I don't know, because like a lot of us in the class, as soon as we got the email, we were like freaking out in our own private group chat. And like several people, I want to say, at least I know I did, and somebody else had emailed him and was like, hey, we don't feel comfortable with this. And he was just like, feedback is important. And was just like, meh. And then like, I don't, yeah, it was strange. But yeah, definitely oh, not gonna okay. do that again. <laughs> okay, so he pushed back. And so I would I would continue to push did, back. Yeah. It means a lot to you. Um I think you know, feedback is important, yes, but maybe there was a way you could have done feedback privately with a professor or someone uh, or maybe he just could have been more upfront that th this would be a sharing thing it sounds like he wasn't clear so you didn't even have the chance to prepare yourself for it emotionally it kind of came as a surprise mm -hmm. um so i do think if other people message him i do think it could be a thing where you could um let them know that by the way this came as a bit of a surprise we would have liked more of a heads up or this to remain optional something like that just you know it yeah. wasn't just coming for me we had a private chat going on before and um i just want to let you know that some of the people in the class felt this way i understand and agree that feedback is important especially in study and education um but the approach to this feedback ain't it yeah you know and you can think on that before yeah. you feel um the good news is you learned that you're not going to do this again yeah, and that was kind of like what our class was saying. We were just like, we wish he had just told us ahead of time. Yeah, no, he, he needs to and know then, that. Like, That's ridiculous. Was, yeah. That's ridiculous. If if, if this was sprung on you, this. if you guys, yeah, Dot, sorry, go ahead. Uh, this professor, uh, and this also uh, sounds like an opportunity uh, for Dorothy's favorite thing, organizing. <laughs> organize with the people, uh, organize with the other people in the class. If there are pe other people uh, feeling it, 
it's one thing if you go to the professor and you're like, hey, I felt uncomfortable and some people found it uncomfortable. It's a whole other thing if half the class is like, hey, we really didn't like this assignment because then it's half the class saying it and then it reflects on there. There's like a clear thing where the professor cannot deny that, oh, this exactly. is a thing that is affecting a majority of the class that is yeah. also affecting the class's learning. Yeah. Yeah. Power oh the goddamn union. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Power like, the union. That's a really kind great of point. did that. Right. Because, like, there were a few people who emailed him, and then he ended up, like, sending another email regarding that and was just, like, sharing is important and kind of made it seem like it wasn't optional until the last second where I like my my person was about to share my session and he was just like oh if it's too personal don't share it and I was like what and I just kind of panicked and was like no you can share it that's fine I guess but like yeah I don't know it just, sounds I, like a yeah. bad teacher just generally especially for the stuff that's why it's like that's why it's always like I talk about this I think that you need schooling for the stuff and you need an innate ability for it um, he doesn't sound like he he inhibits the the natural kind of foundations of this type of study. Um, he sounds a little sketchy to me as a teacher. I don't know if there's somebody above him that you can kind of do an anonymous complaint to or where there are things like that. I don't know if this is a teacher you'll have to have many more times for other classes. This is the kind of class you can kind of just get through. I don't know how help, like, I don't know how fixable he is. I do think you should let him know still. Is because there a department you, head that you could talk yeah. to? Yeah. Yes, I'm pretty sure there is. I guess, like, I know I'm really I'm I'm grateful that y'all are kind of saying to go to someone else because I feel like I've been really mixed up in my feelings about just like, no, it's not that big of a deal. But like, it's really nice to hear that y'all are like, no, go to someone else. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I'm think sure you can talk to your classmates and like uh and develop something to bring like together to a uh to like that to a head of the department or somewhere above their head that is a uh yeah just just puts it very succinctly uh yeah th that is a total uh okay thing to do in this scenario yeah exactly because the thing is is like you're going to make this the program why better yeah you're going to make the program better for the people who have to take his class next and even though you were like a like you had to go through that it's like you're a grown up. What what I realize like about school at this level is like we're not kids anymore. We're not in elementary school. And guys, if you're in the queue, this is a long answer. You're staying in the queue. That's the number one rule calling into the show. You call in, you wait in the queue until we pick up and it's worth it. Um, but, you know, it reminded me like when I was at McGill, it's not nothing. And I had intro to accounting uh -huh. with, no, it wasn't intro to accounting. It was intro to finance with Chetre, shout out to Chetre. Um, and this pompous professor, um, the first day I had an old calculator. I bought everything, I went to school self, you know, I, I worked for school, I got scholarship, and then I, um, for the next years I worked while I went to school. And so I had a little bit older version of a financial calculator. It still did all the things, you know what I mean? That sort of thing. And I didn't even really know it was an older version of the calculator. I bought it off somebody who maybe had graduated the program a year or two before me. And during the class, he gave some type of, he gave some type of thing to do with the calculator and, and I, and I was doing it, but it wasn't working. And he looked at my calculator and he said in front of like 50 people, he said, listen, if you don't have the latest version of the calculator, I don't have time for you. Something like that Ooh, embarrassed me. Embarrassed me that I bought a used calculator. Which these textbooks, as you know, and anybody who goes to university, college knows, is they can be two hundred dollars textbook. So yeah, you're you're saving where you can. I went to his office hours after. I remember being what nineteen years old, twenty years old, and I let him know. I said, by the way, uh, Professor Chetri, the way that you spoke to me in class was unacceptable. I am a grown up. I am here voluntarily. You're not speaking to a child. We, you and I are grown ups. I speak to you with respect. You absolutely speak to me with respect. This is not elementary school. 
I'm paying to be here with my money. And I will never be spoken to or embarrassed in front of my classmates again by you. And this guy was also a CEO of a company or something like that. And he was adjunct, you know, professor at the business school. But it's unacceptable for professors to be power trippy or letting you know or may belittling you or not taking your concerns seriously. I do think this is a case where you go to somebody else and, and even though it can't go back and change your experience, um, it'll help others and, and that's, that always feels great. And you've learned the lesson of you're not doing this again. And it took me, you know, we all have to go through these things. But you're not a child. And, and this is always a conversation. Grown-up school, university is a two-way street. You're paying them. Don't forget that. Thank you for calling. We're getting great new callers. Yeah, thank you so much. Abby, thank you for calling Dot. Dot gave me advice on the Dot call. Dot, I thank you. Dot brought up a very good point before you go, Dot, if you have a sec. Preston, yeah, where sure. are we at? Where are we at with these Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group mugs? How can we be a consulting firm without the mug? I'm happy to add a mug for you. You yeah. want a mug? Yeah, Dot would like of a mug. Of course, you like want a mug, mug you Bryson. You want a fucking mug. We're a consulting group. It's a real ass company. We're Is business people. Like Why wouldn't we have mugs? Okay, we're closing deals. Mugs are for closers. This is the highest grossing show on this godforsaken streaming network. We want mugs. Dot, thank you for backing me on that. If you weren't on, you know, because it, it falls on deaf, air, on deaf ears. This was the power of the union, having Dot on the call with me. Yeah, fucking solidarity forever, Robbie. Solidarity. I love you, Dot. Thank you for helping out. Guys, the queue is packed. You guys are calling in. I'm loving it. Not only are you calling in, guys, you have you. to remember, you have to remember to contribute. PlanetScum.live. Drop down Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. Make this the the the, the biggest grossing show on PlanetScum.live. You know that I put PlanetScum.live on the map. You know that this, some would call me the face of this godforsaken network. And if I wasn't so embarrassed that they don't send sweatshirts to Canada, I might accept that position. That said, keep us at number one. You're contributing at planetscum.live the most that you can. You heard it from Dot Dot is doing this weekly, as are you. New callers, thank you for joining us. You're brave and you're getting the help that you need. Bryson, who do we have on the line? We keeping Dot around for this call? No, Dot, uh, Dot we said but Dot, Dot, thank you. Dot can enjoy the show. Goodbye. I don't know if Dot is still there. Dot? All right, we're moving to S from Michigan. S from Michigan, how can I help you? Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. Hi, Robbie. Um, I have a cat issue. Um, so I have a cat, she's four years old, and my roommate um, has, well, my roommate had two cats, and then her boyfriend moved in, and he got a fourth cat. Um, and it's another girl cat, my, my cat's a girl, and they've been fighting a lot. Okay, wait, who, um, okay, go back. The roommate has two cats, the boyfriend has one cat, you have one cat. Yeah, yeah. Four cats. Four cats right now. Um, cats, go on. Well, um, so it's kind of a two-part issue is my cat and the boyfriend's cat fight a lot. It's mm -hmm. stressful and we all hate it. It's, it's getting a little bit better, but it's not, cat fights. It's not so much great. Mm -hmm. um, and I was thinking about getting another because I'm probably moving out soon and I wanted her to have a friend cat when I move out, um, but that feels impossible right now. Cats don't like friends. So that's kind of where I'm at. Cats don't like friends. That's a dog thing. It's a different kind of, it's a fish thing. Well, fish the, like friends. The three cats before the boyfriend guy cat all got along fine. We didn't have any issues. There's been no fighting with those three. It's only, because those two were boys, it's only once we got another girl that they started to fight. So if I got another one, it would be a boy cat probably. You'd have to see. You'd have to be, listen, the cat's been through a lot. 
Okay. The cat's been through a lot. So when you move and you take this cat with you, okay, give the cat some time. And then any cat that you get, make sure that probably you do foster to adopt so that you can see how they get along um, before you adopt right out. I would definitely do a foster to adopt yeah. program in this case because I think it's for the best interest of both cats. If you adopt a cat and, and is afraid or doesn't get along with your cat, you've now ruined two cats. Yeah. Okay, cats do need time. Oh, Diva Deluxe. Hi, Danielle. Thank you for watching. Danielle, shout out to Danielle. Okay, one of the greatest comics in the biz. Danielle, say in the comments if you don't mind me revealing your name. If you if you want me not to, I'll hold it back. Okay. But once I reveal the name, I can't go back. Hi, Robbie. Does that mean I can say who you are? In any event, Danielle, one of the greatest comedians in the game, one of the most generous, made me a cocktail from scratch. I don't know how to make Danielle Perez. There she is. Check it out. You don't think she's booking? You're going to see her all over television very soon. Very soon. Made me a cocktail from scratch. Speaking of scratches, the cats. They, cats don't love friends. And when they do, it takes time. Somebody said in the comments, you, you have to be able to. Sometimes they say a cat exposure is such a long process that sometimes you have to put one cat in another room, keep the cats separate, and then maybe let them look at each other one day. And that's it for 10 minutes. And then you close the rooms again. And then you let them do it for longer and you see how they react. Or that you put one food in the other. You, you do things that smell like them to do cat exposure. So that's how delicate the process is. Okay, the chance of two cats getting along is very hit or miss. You'll never know until you do the exposure therapy, which takes time, inch by inch. They look at each other. Then you move an article of clothing that the cat was sleeping on to the other cat and see how they react and that sort of thing. But definitely, I think because of what the cat's been, you know, the cat clearly doesn't just get along with any cat. You know that now. You're going to mitigate that risk a little bit by getting a male cat, which you think has a better result. Fine. But try and look into a foster to adopt program. Okay, because don't hurt two cats and your cat's been through it. So I think if you're really set on getting another cat, to foster to adopt, take your time with it. And if it doesn't work, be honest about it not working. Don't force your cat in a situation it doesn't want to be in. Yeah. Okay. Thank you for calling. I'm yeah, glad I've you. helped you. Tell everybody you know to call in here every Thursday. We're happy to help. Thank you, S. Who do we have next on the line? You guys are great. New callers only. We are killing it with the new callers. People are building trust. People are like cats. We move slow. Bryson. Who do we have on the line? We have another first-time caller, Natalie in Toronto. Natalie in Toronto. Why do I feel like this first-time caller has been on the show, but just not as a caller? There she is. Oh, yes, my first time calling. Hello. And I happen to be wearing the necklace you made me. I didn't know you were calling. Oh. No, I, I honestly wasn't my idea. idea. Shout out to Noor Hadidi. Another comedian is watching. Oh, no, I just want to. I have a few call. things to say. First of all, love the new name. Thank you. What? Thank you. Your phone is so low, Natalie. I'm like, name. yeah. Okay. Second of all, I don't know why Bryson doesn't have mugs or pens. We have no pens. We have no mugs, and he can't get the sweatshirt to Canada. Natalie tried to order a sweatshirt. She couldn't get it. She was in Canada. Bryson kept denying that there was a moratorium in, on Canadian goods. He kept saying they're going to Canada. I'm like, I think there's a moratorium. Anyway, okay, I yes. It's like a hate crime at this point. It really is. It's anti-Semitic. It's a crime at this point, and I. And should I be asked? Should I ask a question? Is this what I is this what I do? Do I need to ask? Yes, a you ask a question. Nor actually DM'd me about calling in because Nor needs the advice, and I know it. And if you have to ask Nor's question, you can too. Okay, but so Nor so should gather the courage. I will go. I will. So I what? will go. I just want to say that to Bryson. I just want to say to Bryson, I need pens, and that's honestly. Well, you're not going. going. Ask I'll me the question. Well, I, I, I just, I just. What, how do I prepare for an ultrasound? How do you prepare for an ultrasound? I've got one in the morning. You have one in the morning? That's my question. Wait, Natalie, can I say yeah. why you're getting an ultrasound? Why I think you're getting an ultrasound? Yeah. I can reveal? Yeah. This is a Rob Veal. 
Sure. You know, there's the Rue Veal. We got Rob Veals too. This is a big Rob Veal. Natalie, and I'm revealing this now, and I can't take it back. We're live. So I hope you know what I'm revealing, but it is what it is. Consent again. I think so. I think so. If you're right, go. Okay. Natalie is offering to help uh, her sister conceive a child. Natalie might be donating eggs. By the way, these aren't cheap eggs. I heard that Jewish eggs go for a lot of cash. have a lot of money for these Jewish eggs because my gynecologist once mentioned to me, said, oh, I said, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do kids. They said, by the way, have you considered donating your eggs? It's a big help. I said, not really. I don't think so. They said, listen, with the eggs you have, you could make. And I said, what, what do you mean? What kind of money? And they said, well, Jewish eggs, they tend to do very well. $30,000 an egg is what it is. I might have to think about it. But I'll have to do hormones and the whole bit. Natalie, is this an unbelievable gift you're possibly giving to your sister? By the way, depending how many eggs you get, I might need a, an egg myself. I hope I can get the family price too. Well, good. Here, I'll tell you that if I, I can give them away, we're going to take out 10 for me, 10 for her. So you can have five of my 10. I don't care. Take it. By the way, you have 20 eggs. What kind of a yield is that? That's the best yield I've ever heard of. Natalie is fertile. And she has beautiful eggs. No, 20 no, no, no. Eggs. That's that's the goal. The goal is to get 20. The goal is to get 20. And we're all getting them. How much are you going to give me an egg for? No. I got three. You can have five for three. I don't care. I have one of my babies. Well, I'm going to have cross. We have one of your babies. I'm not doing it. You do. Great. You yeah, do. I'm not doing it. You're not doing it. Guys, we got Natalie's eggs. And by the way, uh, he said nothing. Natalie, you can get 30000 for the remaining eggs. I don't want to give my eggs away. This is a family deal. You can have some, I can have some, and my sister can have some. Chelsea, Chelsea Bridge brings up a great point. This is excellent merch. Can we give out Natalie eggs as merch? Can we sell them on the site, Natalie? <laughs> and someone, if if you can make merch for twelve thousand dollars, I will give an egg away. Okay, you heard it here. New merch, our first merch before mugs and pens at Robbie Huffman Consulting. We have one of Natalie's eggs. Twelve thousand dollars will be on the site. Twelve thousand dollars for one of Natalie's eggs will be on the site. Get. Your very exclusive Robbie Hoffman Consulting merch, one of Natalie's eggs. This is hotter than a supreme drop. Natalie, this is unbelievable. Okay, someone, this okay, call is taking a turn. Comments are wild, by the way. Are you reading the comments? Right. She loves com Natalie loves compliments in the comments. Shout out to Natalie in the comments. This is very good comedy. Thank you, Dad. This is what we do. This happens to be the funniest. Most informative show, not only on this godforsaken network, but maybe on the internet. And you guys are complaining about contributing at planetscum.live, giving $5. I better check the numbers tonight. We better be millionaires after tonight's show. And with this, with this merch, Natalie, this is really going to help with the show. We sell one of these eggs. I mean, think about the possibilities. We'll have mugs. We'll have pens. We'll do it all. Natalie, thank you for calling in. Please encourage your friend more. Please encourage your friend Noor to gather the courage to help you. She's in line. Goodbye. She's in line. Okay, Bryson, bring up Noor. Who's next? Who's next? New We've caller. Noor from caller. Toronto. Noor from Toronto. Welcome to Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. How can we help you? Oh my God. Hi, Robbie. How I'm so are excited you? to be here. I can't wait for the merch. Okay, I'm going to get all the merch, all of it. Getting, getting merch. Natalie's. Yeah. Who's By the way, everyone keeps talking about. He's the producer. Ignore oh, him. Okay. Ignore him. Okay. Ignore him. Okay. Also, I want to say very nice flowers in the back. Very, very nice. Thank very you. Cute. My girl sent me. Um, they smell amazing. As you know, I love flowers. People go hard on flowers. Nothing yeah. more than flowers. I love that they do nothing but smell and look amazing. That's all you have to do if you're flowers. Nobody's asking anything more of you. Nor thank you. No problem. Robbie, I need advice from you. You know, whenever I see you. By, oh, by the way, I was kind of a bit disappointed when you were telling the story about the calculator because 
you and I were in financial accounting together. So I am sad that it was an intro to finance and not intro to financial accounting. I don't know us, which one it was. You know Nor uh, went to McGill. Nor, do you remember Chetre? Yeah. Did you have him? No, I never took finance one with him. No, 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 no. He was a good looking guy, but he was like I pompous. Remember do you remember? I oh. Finance. No, we had, we had accounting one together. Gray. Linda Grass, God bless her, yeah. one of the worst teachers I've ever had, but the nicest. And Chetre was the, the yeah. worst <laughs> at personality bedside, but one of the best teachers. You know, really taught yeah. well, okay. but was an asshole. You can never get you a, really... whole, a good professor. They can only be good no. at one thing. It's, it's, and you heard, that. you heard with the call earlier today. It's like, you know, like, sounds like they're doing good exercises, but at what fucking cost? It's, it's always is given, something's got to give. Nor, how can we help you? Bobby, I need dating advice. You know, it's a pandemic. And um, there was this guy that I kind of went out with last year. It didn't end that well. And so I'm just wondering if I should um, message him to hang out because it's a pandemic and I can't really meet anyone new. Do you think this is a good idea? How do you... Wait. A guy you were kind of seeing. Why did it end last year? Why did it end last year? Because yeah. he was too busy to hang out. He wanted to focus on his work is what he said. You can never see him again. <laughs> you can never. You don't think the president okay. of the United States of America is married? Has a full fucking relationship yeah. and kids in the whole fucking bit? And this guy's too busy? But the president? Of the United States. Think it was a blow. It was, you think he's lying? Too Bobby, busy. Lying? Too busy is the worst thing I've ever heard. Okay. Right. Biden's married. Obama was married. Yeah. I won't talk about the president in between. It doesn't really matter. But you think Barack Obama <laughs> could have a healthy relationship, but this guy in Toronto is too busy, wants to focus well, on his here's career? The thing, Robbie. What if I have no expectations of him being my boyfriend, but I just, because it's been such a hard pandemic, it's just someone to hang out with. You no, know? someone to hang out with, go hang out with Natalie, go hang out with friends. You don't need you to put your heart on the line for Natalie somebody to hang out with. Bubble. She won't see anyone. Oh, but because she's in a bubble, she won't see anyone. Oh, okay, there's someone's like, this is the advice I needed to hear as well. Mel, you're in the same boat as me. Okay. So you think, no, even just casually hanging out, we can't see this guy. That's what you think. No, because you're not casual. You don't want casual. You want a boyfriend, and in fact, you want a husband. So you're not going to be yeah. able to put no expectations because that's not who you are. No, you're not a frivolous person. Yeah. You don't hook up. You yeah. barely do any of the frivolous stuff. Yeah. It's just not your vibe. It's not what you like. Yeah. So you'd be bending who you yeah, are. True to maybe get part of this guy who's not even worth it. Now, I get You're it right. that splitting in pandemic is tough, but definitely continue to talk to people. Don't give up. Chatting yeah. will give you, chatting, a good chat will give you the same that seeing this guy who you don't even really feel is that into you is going to get you. That's going to make you feel worse, I feel. Right. Right? Well, I'd rather you get a vibrator. Um, Start exploring and chat yeah. to people. <laughs> okay, because okay. God knows, even if you start seeing this guy, he's going to want a quick lay and you're not going to want to do that. So you don't want what that no. is. You do want expectations. You do want it all. Okay, that right. said, when you meet somebody you connect with, you don't, have to, you don't have to flood them with all of that stuff right away. But as long as you feel like, okay, this is, this is somebody that might, might be able to go serious, That'll alleviate some of the things, you know. This guy, you know, can't do that. He's already told you he's potentially too busy right. for a relationship, which, again, Biden is happily married. And he's the president. Okay, so I, I'm just telling you that start chatting. Don't lay all this on anybody on the first date. You know, you don't have to pressure is hard for, you know, I'm somebody who doesn't feel great with pressure. But just having more of an optimistic that this guy could potentially be into that might make you feel better. You know, you know already the answer with this person, so I don't know why you would revisit that. This person has no potential. 
Okay. Okay. Of, of making you feel better because they want something you simply don't want. You've already established that. And they gave you this lame excuse. They're too busy. Right. Unless this person was like stalking you after you saying, I was such an idiot. I'm so embarrassed. I told you I was so busy. I couldn't stop thinking about you. Fine. But it doesn't sound like that's happening. It right. sounds like you're fighting for somebody who continues to not no, fight for you. He's, he's kind of reached out, but like, I don't, he like, I don't know why, like he'll reach out every once in a while and he'll offer to help me with things here and there, you know, but like, it's never been something like, no, let's date again. I think it's he's along bored. the lines of like. He's bored and he'd like a little hand job and you're not going to give him one. So it's just not going to work. <laughs> okay. Back to the drawing board. Continue to chat. Okay. It's good that you notice in yourself that you don't want to have expectations. I think that lesson for this guy is finished, but still apply that. You know, when you meet somebody new, give them a fresh start. Don't have all these expectations, even though you can know what you want. You don't have to put your expectations on somebody else. You can know what you want, value that. Okay. And see where things go at the same time. And when, when you reach that bridge, you'll cross it. This guy, you read, you got over the bridge. There's no going back. We, we cut the rope bridge. That's it. Right. So thank okay. you for calling, Nor. I've helped. I've told you what you needed to thank hear. Thank you for no advice, question. Robbie. Not at all. We're happy. We're, we're, we're happy to help here. You're contributing, Nor. Don't forget it. Planetscum.live. That goes for all the viewers of tonight's program. Even if you have not called, but you have watched, this is not a free operation. You are contributing at planetscum.live. Make sure to hit the drop down. Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group, 802-427-7286 is our number here. We hear for you every week. Okay. Uh, we will take one last call before I reveal, Rob Veal, the winner of the vintage. Dyke Vi sweatshirt from last week's competition. Bryson, who do we have on the line? We have Overreactor. Overreactor, oh, welcome to Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. How can we Hi, help you? Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. Well, Hi. I know I am a previous caller, but you you did make a uh, shout out for people to have like their roommate call in for the first yes. time. And I live alone with my pet. And so I thought I could maybe call in on behalf of my dog. No, this um, isn't cheap. No, this isn't cheap, but I'll help you anyway. This is a cheat. You took a spot okay. in the queue for somebody new. This is a cheat, but I'm going to help you anyway because I'm a good person of reactor, and you know this. You know this. Thank you. And I, I do know it. And I, and at the time that I called in and got in the queue, it sounded like there weren't a lot of people. And then I was like, sure. You were trying to help. I don't hang up. You were trying to help. Yeah. I get it. I get help. it. I get yeah. it. Again, uh, you, you played the system, you. you worked it out. How can I help you, Overreactor? Sure. So my dog, she's a black lab. Uh, her name is Emma. Yes. Yes. And she's uh, four years old. Yes, yeah, she's such a good dog. She's so oh, great. And I'm she's sure. very, very active. Every day, we, we, you know, I throw the ball with her. She loves to play. Nah, she's love very it. obedient. But a, she's wonderful. Yeah. Um, well, of course, this whole week, um, I'm in Louisiana. We've had this crazy frost that and snow and ice that none of us are prepared for. I don't no. know how to walk on the ice. Like, it's just crazy. And so it's been very hard to take her on walks because, you know, and she she's doesn't like to walk in the, what? yeah, like she'll go outside to go to the bathroom and that's it. And so right. this whole week, and we have like two, two more days until it's supposed to like thaw out, but she's kind of going stir crazy. And I don't know, like, I'm more of a cat person, except for Emma. Like, she's so, oh, my God, she's such a good dog. I just don't know what activity to do with a lab in the house to keep her entertained and get her energy out when we can't really go outside very much. Well, just distract her with the smaller games. I think that trying to replace outdoor activity with indoor activity is impossible, but just keep her mind distracted then. So yeah. you're not going to get her on those great runs, but put like a little bit of peanut butter in one of those Kong things. You know what I mean? Put something that takes a lot of time and energy oh. and effort for her. Um, and then she can be occupied for a long amount of time, but it's not the running occupation that you're looking for. You're never going to replace that unless you rip up your whole house. Um, and even then, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's not giving her that. So I definitely think do more of a mental game, go inwards then. If she's inside, do something that's a little more local. So definitely, yeah, Annika, same idea. Put a treat in a hard 
to get placed, make it a puzzle. Exactly. That's why I suggest that peanut butter and the Kong thing. I'm not, okay. I don't have a dog, but, but every time I've seen a dog with that thing, it takes them forever. They lose their minds and they're distracted for two or three hours until they get every, every last bit of peanut butter. Um, okay. so definitely think about I'll more of those toys. Yeah. If you can. Yeah. I'll um, Great, thank you. Okay, not at all, happy to help. I am Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. Thank you everyone for calling tonight. Before we reveal the winner of the now vintage Dykevice sweatshirt, let me remind you that tonight you are following me. If you're not already, you are telling people to follow me. On Twitter, and I am Robbie Hoffman. I had a viral tweet this week, it's not nothing. You are following me on Instagram, Robbie Hoffman. Keep an eye out for those ski pics. Y'all know I'll be going skiing. I might upload a video. We might have to see what this looks like. Also now, the most important, Robbie Hoffman on YouTube. Robbie Hoffman one, but you can just click in Robbie Hoffman. Follow me, like every single video, comment on the videos, share the videos, keep them playing even when you're not watching. Let's get the YouTube up. Let's get YouTube into the mix so that our viewers in in, in London and in Australia and overseas can keep watching the program since they can't live. As usual, you are not only watching and enjoying the show, you're contributing to this very not free show at planetscom.live. Drop down, Robbie Hoffman Consulting. Keeps everybody doing this show. Hopefully gets Bryson enough money so he can make a, a, a little cue card for our intro next week to Robbie Hoffman Consulting Group. I am here for you every Thursday, 7 p.m. Pacific Time, 10 p.m. Eastern Time. Without further ado, without further ado, was that all the housekeeping? I think it was. Without further ado, and I hope they are watching, we had a very competitive contest for one of the last remaining Dyke Vice University sweatshirts at planetscum.live slash merch. We only have a few sizes left. I suspect by tonight after the show, if you found out you are not the winner, you will head to planetscum.live slash merch as soon as you can and get the sweatshirt that is now vintage and out of stock. Whatever is there is there. They are not made to print. They were ordered. You'll get what's left of them without further ado. I don't know. Can we get a drum roll? Is there something I had to plan, Bryson? I had to tell you about this before, yeah. or we can't get a drum roll? Yeah, yeah, you would have had to tell me before. So you can't do it? I, I can. I, this is the closest thing I have. Can you do that like 10 times in a row? Uh. Okay, okay, okay. Without further ado, the winners of the vintage Dyke Vice sweatshirt are Ella and her friend Lillian, and I'll tell you why. And I'll tell you why, because they're fun. That's it, because they're fun. That was a fun call. And I deliberated over the week and I thought about it and I thought, what should I do? Do I rewatch the entire episode? Do I really make pros and cons of each person's call? Do I see who is the most deserving? of the sweatshirt, who's the most loyal viewer, who is going to give me the most press? Do I take in all these strategies? And then I just kept going back to their call. It just kept, I kept thinking of it. I kept, when I kept thinking of who called in, who wanted the sweatshirt? I remembered Ella and her friend. I wanna be very honest with you, until today, I didn't know her friend's name was Lillian. I looked back, but muzzle top to Lillian. And Ella, they had a fun call. It was a collective call. They are sharing the sweatshirt. They created this sisterhood of the traveling sweatshirt and it was fun. And I did think for a second I'd give it to my girl. Very manipulative move. And my girl called in and she said that she wouldn't be mad at me if she got the sweatshirt, but I don't believe her. Don't believe women. Don't believe women, you heard it here. If I really believed that she would never be mad at me, she'd have the sweatshirt. But I can't trust that. Have you met me? You're never going to be mad at me. You're never going to be mad at me. That makes no sense. So mazel tov. 
Mazel Tov to Ella and Lillian for winning the Dyke Five sweatshirt. You'll join us next week where I will hopefully have received the sweatshirt by then. I will sign it live on camera and be shipping it to Ella and Lillian. We will see you next week. Thank you so much. I'm going to be the first therapist to tell you exactly what to do.